Hi, my name is Kent C. Dodds. I'm the owner and maintainer of the Angular Formly project, and we're going to talk about how to get a new feature or a bug fix into Angular Formly. So your first step is to create an issue. So when you're reporting a bug fix, um, or when you're reporting a bug, or you want a new feature, uh, you'll go create a new issue. And if you haven't already read the guidelines for creating issues, please read that um, and clone this template and reproduce the issue somehow or um, Im illustrate why the feature is needed in here and put a link to um, that cloned temp uh, that cloned uh, JS bin into your issue and then we can discuss uh, the approach that we'll take to solve the issue or if if maybe there's a better way to accomplish what you're trying to do or um, if we're just simply that's out of scope for the project and we're not going to do it. So the reason that it's important to create an issue first is I don't want you to um, put a bunch of time into a pull request and then have me reject it because of technical re limitations or uh, because it's out of scope of the project or any other reason. So um, unless you're feeling ambitious and, and you don't mind uh, wasting um, time or potentially wasting time, then please make an issue first. And, and once you, you get the go ahead from me, then uh, then you can create a PR. So um, you'll, uh, when you want to create a, a pull request to uh, resolve the issue that you've, um, that you've reported, you will fork the library. And here we'll, I'll fork it myself. And this will only take a few seconds. And then you're taken to your fork. So you will uh, go over here and copy this URL. And then you'll go to your dev tool or to your terminal and uh, whoops and you'll go wherever you want to clone your repository so i'll just say git clone right here and paste the url there we'll change directory into angular formally and we'll npm install okay so once everything's installed um, all, all that you need to do is do npm run test and that will start the test and you can start making changes uh, to uh, to Angular formally and, and make sure that the tests are still passing. Um, and so, yeah, it pops up uh, Chrome and you'll have everything working. So there is a, a caveat to this. Uh, this will only work if you're running on a Linux machine, the NPM test. If you're not, I'm working on making it work for both uh, Windows and uh, Mac or Linux. Um, and so, yeah, if you're on a Windows machine, then what you're going to have to do is you'll go into the package JSON of the project and you'll find this uh, scripts property here and all these scripts are available for you to run by typing npm run and then the name of the, the script the uh, special case for that is test and start you can omit the run for test and start and uh, those will work the only one that you should really care about running is test okay so if you are on a windows machine i believe that um, what you need to do is just copy this and you will change um, node env to set node env test and then put an ampersand there and that should run fine on your machine um, i believe but i don't have a windows machine to verify that um, but it's what i'm told so yeah so now that you have the you have the test running um, and i've got a, a different project over in here so i'll have my test running here so you can begin to, um, here, I'm going to just close this guy. Uh, you can begin making changes to your project um, in whatever editor that you use. I don't care what editor you use. The only thing that is um, important, and I will close, or, or I will not accept a pull request uh, for this, if you don't follow the conventions of uh, the project as far as uh, um, the format of the code. So. Here we have an editor config, and if your uh, editor, your IDE, or your uh, text editor doesn't support editor config, um, then you're just going to have to enforce this yourself. But editor config should hopefully help uh, make sure that um, your editor will just do things uh, correctly. So we use uh, single quotes in JavaScript and double quotes in HTML. Uh, we use two spaces and, and um, instead, of, uh, instead of tabs, and uh, that's both in HTML and JavaScript and new lines at uh, the end of all files. So uh, yeah, just make sure that you follow that convention. So let me explain uh, the structure of the project. Your node modules, obviously, if you're familiar with node, 
Um, that is git ignored and it is created when you run npm install and this is all of our dependencies for this project. Uh, the disk directory is the distributable files for um, Angular formally and this is, uh, you shouldn't be committing any changes to the disk directory. If you commit changes to the disk directory, I'll ask you to resubmit the PR. Um, though, yeah, though that file should never be committed um, by anybody else. And then local examples. Uh, this is your playground if you want to um, mess around with things um, before, like visually um, before you actually commit anything. So you can change pretty much anything that you like in here. I don't, I don't really care. Um, but don't commit um, any of your changes to local examples. And so the, the files that you do commit are in the source directory. And also you can commit the errors and warnings uh, file if you have a better warning or, or error message or something that you'd like to, to make a change to, and that's fine. And if you're going to be doing just an errors and warning like change, just like changing the wording here, then you don't actually need to pull this down and you can use the in um, the uh, web GitHub editor. That's just fine. Um, I don't really care about that. But uh, yeah, the, the main bulk of the things that you're going to be changing are in the source directory. So let me explain a little bit how this works. We're using Webpack with ES6 uh, using Babel to, uh, uh, to package our module. And so here we have an index.js. That's the entry file. So uh, this will simply import from the common and export um, what is uh, received from common. And then we have an index test, and this actually brings in all the test suites for the project and run, um, and that starts uh, the running of the tests. So that's kind of how that is all structured there. Uh, the index common uh, brings in all of the different pieces or all the different modules of Angular formally, and it uh, registers those with the Angular formally module and then it exports the Angular formally module, uh, or rather the name. And so that, that makes it so people can say like var my module equals angular dot module my module, and then they can say require angular formally. Um, and that is made possible because we are exporting the module name. So very useful. Um, so then we uh, we set all those up on the um, on our Angular module, and that's kind of how everything gets bootstrapped together. So let's take a look really quick at a couple of things. We have Angular Fix. So a couple of versions of Angular uh, don't um, export the Angular module properly, and so whenever inside of your code, if you need to import Angular for any reason, you simply import Angular Fix, and that will uh, be correct. So there's one place I can show you where we're doing this in formally field up at the top we say import angular from angular fix so you'll do the same if you ever need uh, to bring in angular and then um, most of the time most of your time will be spent uh, likely most of the uh, pull requests will be um, added to formally form or formally field and so the structure is is like this here's our DDO or directive definition object um, and then we have our controller and our link. And so if you're interested in how Angular formally uh, generates the template and compiles it for each field, that happens in the field link function. Um, it's, we're using newspaper code style um, or code structure. And so the important stuff is up at top and the details are at the bottom, um, which should hopefully be a lot easier for you to consume. And then we have our formally field controller and that sets up um, a lot of the different uh, um, merging of options based on the type and, and different things like that happen inside the formally field controller. And uh, that is also newspaper code style. So uh, then there's the formally form, and this is also newspaper code style. So we are bringing an Angular from Angular Fix, and we have our uh, directive here, which we are exporting. And um, we return the directive definition object. We have a controller here and we have our link function here and then we also have um, a template getter here um, because angular formally's um, template is actually quite advanced for the formally field and allows you it's highly uh, customizable um, and so we generate that uh, for each form based on this uh, this function so 
that's how everything is all set up and structured. Um, and there's also, we have a, a couple other things like utilities and some providers and um, so the template manipulator happens here. And um, yeah, that's pretty fancy. Um, and then finally, if you, whenever you make uh, or submit a pull request, it needs to have tests to uh, first validate the bug that you're trying to fix. And then, um, um, and then you, you fix it. And so that test should now be passing. Uh, so if you use TDD, that's great. If you don't, I don't care. Um, I just really appreciate having tests in these pull requests to, to validate that the bug has actually been fixed. Um, if you're adding a feature, please test that feature. And so all tests are found right next to the item that they're testing. So we have our formally custom validation directive. Um, there's a test file right there. And um, so you should um, put your tests right next to the, the unit that you're testing. If you're not sure whether something should be tested as part of the formally field or the formally form, um, it actually really doesn't matter a lot because um, the formally field uh, tests, um, most of them use a formally form to, to test the formally field um, because they're pretty, pretty coupled. And so, yeah, just use your best judgment on where you put those tests. So anyway, uh, once you've made all your changes, your tests are passing, then what you're going to do is you will uh, get status, and I haven't made any changes, but uh, you will make sure that you only do git commit source, and then you add your message and whatever message that you want. And so unless you're committing something to other, um, or for some reason maybe uh, some docs change uh, or changes or something, um, it should almost always just be source. And I will take care of updating the change log. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, when I actually do a release, uh, just update um, the stuff that you are uh, that you're working on in the source. So you'll add a useful message. I don't really care as much about the message, but please mention uh, the issue number that you're trying to resolve, and um, and then you you commit it and push it. Um, you'll notice when you uh, commit that. Um, the all of the tests are run at that time. That's a git hook using the module g hooks, um, and so you can't commit something where the tests are failing, um, and that's a good thing. So then you'll push it and you'll go back to GitHub, and if you just actually go to the um, original repo, you should see a little thing up here that says you just committed this. Do you want to make a pull request? Uh, click that. If you don't see that, then just click this uh, green button here and uh, click compare across forks and choose your fork so i have can't see dots and go there formally and we'll compare um you know some really old branch um, so yours should say can automatically merge then you'll create your pull request and um and then i will accept it hopefully and that is how you contribute to angular formally create an issue first then uh, if you get the go ahead then create the pull request pull it down, install the dependencies, um, run the tests, um, and make your changes, commit only the source, um, and push that up and have it get accept or create the pull request and then have it get accepted. And that's how you contribute to Angular formally. Thank you.